Hey everyone, so today we are taking a look at all of the dash dash perimeters available to you in Midjourney. I think this will be a very handy video for you if you're just getting started with Midjourney or you're an advanced user because, you know, actually I ended up picking up a couple of things as I was diving into all of this. As a quick note, these are all of the dash dash commands that are available to us today. Midjourney does have the tendency to add new features with each version. Sometimes they just drop new features out of nowhere, but very rarely do they take perimeter commands away from us. So if you're watching this sometime in the future, all of the information here should still be valid. Lastly, this video does serve as a companion piece to a video that I did on prompting fairly recently. You don't have to have watched that first. These videos both work completely independently, but if you haven't caught it, it is linked below. Okay, let's dash dash into dash dash. Perimeters in Midjourney offer several different ways to modify your image prompt. And although most of our examples will showcase the power of each one of these perimeters in an individual context, it's really when you start combining them together that you start getting some pretty incredible results. Perimeters should always be added to the end of your prompt with a dash dash followed by the command. If you're doing multiple perimeters, you don't need commas between them. And truthfully, I haven't noticed any difference if you swap the order around. Okay, let's go take a look at all of our commands. So this is the list of all of the basic perimeters available to us in Midjourney. It begins with aspect ratios and ends with video. We're gonna be going through each one of these. So, you know, you don't need to hurriedly read this or screenshot it or anything. And in fact, all of the visual information in this video will be available as a PDF over on the Gumroad. It is completely free, but as always, donations are always appreciated. And I do thank everyone that has donated in the past. You guys have been really awesome. Kicking off with aspect ratios, which arguably has the largest effect on your overall image, you would issue this command with dash dash AR. Aspect ratios define the proportional relationship of the width to height of your overall image. For example, 16 by nine, I think everybody knows as that's you know the shape of most of our TVs. Three by four is a fairly common photographic aspect ratio and 9 by 16 is the aspect ratio for everyone's favorite black mirror but ever since version 5 we've had the ability to use whatever aspect ratio we want which is actually super cool uh, for example this is a viking on a battlefield with an aspect ratio of 16 9 while we take that same prompt and put in an aspect ratio of 10 4 uh, and then we have a Viking on a battlefield at a aspect ratio of 12-2. So do experiment with different aspect ratios. They're actually super fun. And one of the things that I've kind of discovered is that Midjourney is very, very good at maintaining a compositional structure, even in the weirdest aspect ratios that you throw at it. Moving on to chaos, which is one of my favorite commands, and you can issue with dash dash chaos or dash dash C with a value of zero to 100. This command introduces some unpredictability to your initial set of four images. So the way chaos works is that every time you issue a prompt, those words are then converted into numbers. The chaos function introduces random numbers into that prompt while still maintaining the overall integrity of your initial prompt. So when Midjourney recombines all of these numbers into an image, we have these chaotic elements that are floating around in there, dependent upon how strong you issued the chaos command. For example, this is Jimi Hendrix playing guitar on a Caribbean pirate ship in the year 1780. I don't know why I came up with this, but I can't help but think that those would be some awesome sea shanties. Adding in a chaos of 25 gives us these results, which they are okay. Uh, one in three, I think, probably look the most in line with the prompt, whereas number two just kind of looks like a Jimi Hendrix themed show on a carnival cruise line. Adding a chaos of 50 gives us these results, which you can see things are kind of starting to break apart. Really the only image that looks like our initial prompt is that first one. Though I do have to say, I do like those three other images. And that's kind of where I think the strength of chaos lies is these unpredictable results that may lead you into completely different directions. Of course, when you crank all the knobs up, which you should do because it's Jimi Hendrix, uh, to a chaos of 100, you do end up with some pretty surreal results. For example, in image number four, where it looks like Jimi Hendrix's guest appearance on some 60s cop show, or in image number three, which is, I, I don't even know what's happening there, that is so far away from the initial prompt. Moving on to fast, which we're gonna cover very quickly. Now, fast on its own is not a command that you will generally issue. Midjourney is 
always by default running at fast. The more important command is dash dash relax, which slows mid-journey down, but does not burn your overall GPU hours for the month. Additionally, Midjourney has recently introduced Turbo, which is dash dash turbo, which speeds your image generation up significantly, but at two times the cost of your GPU time. Moving on to image weighting, which is a perimeter that we can control when we have a reference image attached to our prompt. I think in general, people do tend to get a little frustrated with image prompting in Midjourney, but a good way of looking at image weighting is using it as almost a style opacity filter. So I rolled up Van Gogh, painting of a city at night. It is obviously very Starry Night influenced. And just to juxtapose that, I rolled up a completely different type of image. This was avant-garde conceptual cinematic film of the 1902 George Malay's film, A Trip to the Moon, deep aesthetic, intricate details by James Jean and Chris Cunningham. So if you're just using an image reference and a prompt, your image weight defaults to one. So in this case, I took the image of the Van Gogh painting, use that as an image reference, and then used the prompt of a trip to the moon, and we got this image, which is a really interesting combination of the two, as it has obviously elements of Van Gogh's Starry Night, along with, I guess that trip to the moon prompt definitely leaned heavier into the James Jean and Chris Cunningham aspects. Um, but yeah, overall, it ended up a pretty nice mashup between those two images. Taking that same set of prompts and cranking the image weight up to two leads to these results, where obviously the Van Gogh Starry Night painting kind of really overpowers the Chris Cunningham, James Jean trip to the moon aspect of the prompt. But interestingly, because we know that image weighting defaults to one, we can actually turn down the volume a little bit. So this is running that same prompt with an image weight of 0.5. And you can see now that the James Jean, Chris Cunningham trip to the moon aspect is pushed more to the forefront, whereas the Van Gogh-isms are kind of a little more muted. Moving on to no. No might be the most frustrating command in the index of mid-journey commands. It is not uncommon for mid-journey to know your no. When it works by issuing the command dash dash no, followed by an item, a comma, another item, a comma, another item, is that you are instructing the mid-journey bot that these are the items that you do not want to see in your image. For example, this is a cowboy. Obviously he is wearing a hat because that is what cowboys do. So let's prompt a cowboy with a no command of hat. And we get this image, which is still a cowboy. We've added a horse in there because that's the other thing that cowboys do, right? Is they have hats and horses. Um, so now let's get tricky and try to add in dash dash no hat comma horse. And we do end up with an image of a character without a hat or a horse. Uh, though I do think that Midjourney gets a little bit confused by the overall archetype of cowboy when you're saying no hat, no horse, because in Midjourney's mind, that's what cowboys have. Though I do think it's funny that without a hat and a horse, Midjourney just added empty bottles to all of them. So that's the other thing that cowboys are apparently is drunks. As a bit of an advanced technique on no, you can actually multi-prompt weight no's as well. No on its own has a default value of negative 0.5. So you can actually multi-prompt in a situation like this with cowboy, no horse, comment, no hat, and then colon, colon, minus one, which should result in a stronger no hat. Again, that said, no matter how strongly you know, sometimes mid-journey is just not going to listen to you. So just keep that in mind. Moving on, we have repeat, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You issue the command dash dash repeat or dash dash R followed by a number and your prompt will repeat that many times. For example, here we have a wizard standing in a magical forest with a repeat set to four. It'll ask you, do you want to repeat? You just hit yes and off it goes. So we do end up with a number of sort of samey results, uh, which makes sense because it basically is just the same prompt run four times in a row. So an interesting use case for repeat might be to also combine it with a chaos command uh, to get some variety. As you can see, by adding in a chaos of 40 with a repeat of three, because I didn't feel like burning a bunch of hours, we end up with multiple different iterations of basically Gandalf. But, you know, still, um, they are posed differently than sort of the sameness of that initial repeat. 
If you're on the standard plan, you can issue repeats between two and 10 times. If you're on the pro plan, you can go up to 40. But again, remember, those do burn your GPU hours. So, you know, uh, just be careful with it. Moving on to seeds, which can be a little confusing at first, so I'm gonna back up a second and explain exactly what a seed is. As I mentioned earlier, when you issue a prompt in, well, really any AI generator, that prompt is converted into numbers. The bot then takes that series of numbers and plots out an initial field of static in which it begins generating its image. That initial first burst of static is your seed. We can actually take a look at it by kind of jumping ahead a little bit to the stop command, which allows us to stop the image generation at any point that we choose. So uh, I'm gonna run a wizard standing in a magical forest one more time, and I'm gonna stop it very early in so that we can see the initial burst of static. So as you can see, by running a stop command of 10, uh, which is the lowest you can actually run a stop, uh, we see sort of like this blurry, it's just starting kind of image that's beginning to form. That is roughly the beginning of our seed. Now we can either upscale one of these blurry messes, or I can take this initial grid of four, head over to these three buttons and hit the envelope button and Midjourney will then send us information about this image, including the seed number. As you can see, we've got our blurry mess here and right here we have our seed number that I can then copy. So if I wanted to finish this image off, I could take the same prompt and then add dash dash seed followed by the seed number that Midjourney provided us. And essentially we're going to get the image that we would have gotten had I not issued that stop command. And there it is. So seeds are very helpful in terms of creating similar themes and overall vibes across your images. And to a degree, you can even do some manipulation within your prompt using the same seed. Another interesting thing that I found out is that apparently you could just put in your own seed. I didn't actually realize that you could just make your own numbers up. For example, I ran photograph dad at a barbecue with a seed of 20,000, which I did input myself, and then ran that same prompt again with the exact same seed number. And interestingly enough, ended up with the exact same image. But there's a lot of experimenting that you can do when you lock your seed. For example, this is a robot at the beach with a seed of 10,003. And then I take the same prompt and seed only altering the aspect ratio to 16,9. And while you can see, yes, the images aren't exactly the same, they do have the overall vibe of that initial image. Uh, the robot in image number one looks relatively like the robot in the first image of the original. And the pose of the robot in image three is, uh, around the same as the pose of the robot in image three in the original. Locking the seed and adding to the prompt creates some nice variations as well. For example, this is a robot at the beach with the added apocalypse, wasteland, pose humanity, things got a little dark here, uh, and maintaining the same seed ends up with these images, which again, things are shuffled around. For example, in image number one, we have our robot that is sitting on a chair who appeared previously in image number four. Uh, image number two's robot is relatively, I think, the same in terms of uh, kind of like that rounded shape and definitely in terms of his placement. And the Wasteland robot in image number three is relatively the same compositionally, at least, as the robot in the initial 16.9 image as well. Seeds are a concept that I do recommend you familiarize yourself with as it does travel across all of the various AI generators and even into AI video. Stop we did touch on earlier. To be honest, it's a command that I don't think I ever use, uh, but to issue it, it's dash dash stop, and you have perimeters from 10 to 100. 100 being completion, and 10 being, you know, what we saw with the wizard. Moving over to style, there are basically two styles in Mid Journey. There's the default, mid-journey aesthetic. And then there's raw mode, which is a little less opinionated, a little more photographic, um, possibly a little more boring, but it depends on what you're going for. Because the default is the aesthetic version, there really is only one command for style, and that is style raw, in which you can put a prompt in and run it under the raw engine. For example, this is cinematic still, style by 1940s romantic film, handsome man in a tuxedo, eyes filled with joy at a cocktail party in the standard aesthetic 
mid-journey model. Whereas this is the same prompt in the raw mode. It's a little less saturated, uh, a little more subdued in my opinion, but in all honesty, to me at least, looks more in tone with a 1940s romantic film. When you go with very simple prompts, it becomes very clear exactly how heavy-handed Mid-Journey's aesthetics can be at times. Uh, for example, this is toast, just toast, and that is some extreme toast. Whereas in the raw mode, we have toast. Just regular old, yeah, that's toast. Now in the default aesthetic mode, there is a way that we can control the amount of style that Midjourney is placing upon your prompt, and that is with the stylize command or dash dash stylize or dash dash S. By default, stylize is set to 100. So by knowing that we can either increase or decrease the amount of stylization we want on an image. For example, this is a perfect day with a stylize of 100, which basically means it is default. Cranking it up to a thousand, as I do enjoy doing, uh, gives us these images, which are very nice, heavily stylized. It does look like a perfect day. I'm just not sure what planet that perfect day is happening on. Halving things down to a stylize of 500 gives us this, which again, looks very, very nice, stylized. But what's interesting about the stylized being at 100 is that we can actually reduce the amount of stylization as well. For example, this is a perfect day with a stylize of 20 which while still very imaginative, looks a lot more grounded, uh, earth-based, and a little less busy than say Stylize 1000. Moving on, we have the tile perimeter, which is dash dash tile. To be honest, I don't really use this very often, but I can see it being very handy for those of you who are designing things for fabrics or textures or even wallpapers. Playing around with tile for this video actually did lead to some pretty interesting results with very minimal prompts and playing around with different aspect ratios. I also did end up creating the most terrifying children's room wallpaper ever. Two quick interesting notes, uh, zooming out does not continue on with the seamless patterning, uh, but it does make things even more terrifying. And what's really interesting is that panning actually kind of breaks things as well. You can actually see that hard line right there when I issued a pan to the right. Weird, I'm actually not gonna go into a lot of detail on. I did an entire deep dive video into Weird. You can check that out, that is linked below. But briefly, like the command says, it adds weirdness to your image. Uh, you can control it from a range of zero to 3000. 3000 is a giant mess. I would highly recommend not going that high. I've kind of found that my best results happen in the range of like 25 to 100. And if you use it in conjunction with a stylized command, you can end up with some pretty decent results. So uh, if you'd like to learn more about weird, again, that video is linked below. And rounding out, we have video, which is not going to create a video of the prompt that you issue mid journey, at least not yet it isn't. Rather, it creates a video of your image being generated. Uh, let's check it out here. So I just took our avant-garde conceptual cinematic film of a trip to the moon prompt again. Uh, I'm running that in an aspect ratio of 16.9 and then added in dash dash video. So uh, we're gonna hit that. Once our image is generated, we can then go and react to it again with an envelope. And really within a few seconds, we have an MP4 of our image being generated. Make a look at that real quick. It's cool. Um, to be honest, I really don't use video ever, um, but I'm glad to know that it's there in case an idea ever comes to mind. Let me know if you've actually seen anyone use the video command in a creative way. I'd be really curious to see that. And those are our current Midjourney command parameters. Now Midjourney with every version and sometimes just weekly is dropping new commands and perimeters. So please do make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and I will be making videos about them as they come out. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.